Welcome back. We now have John Birmingham, who's standing for camp. John has been a member before, but uh, you've had a while off and you're coming back standing for camp. John, what skills do you believe that you'll bring to the Assembly and uh, what portfolios would you like to, to, to take? Uh, thank you, Richard. May, may I first start by explaining why I'm standing for camp? Please do. Is that? Um, last year after that, uh, referendum, which was bizarre to me in the middle of a pandemic, but nevertheless they had a referendum and uh, it went the way we know it did. That is it now for at least two more assemblies. And so we have to work with what we've got. And I was on a panel set up, uh, the remuneration panel, to look into terms and conditions of the assembly. This isn't anything uh, new. Every assembly for a while has had one. We were also tasked to put in some um, ideas as to how we could improve um, the possibility of people standing from the camp. How could we make it more uh, attractive? The main um, recommendation we put in was to have a more flexible approach to um, being in Stanley for anybody who lives in camp. COVID has told us that um, you can do a lot on screen. And I and the others didn't see any reason why we couldn't trial more use of technology. Uh, at the moment, um, a person has to be in uh, Gilbert House from Monday until Thursday. With technology, even though it's got its problems, we felt that uh, there could be a more flexible approach. That, along with other recommendations, were just rejected. That's what prompted me to, to stand. Um, I believe that we need more people to come forward from the camp. And so I decided if you're not getting anywhere on the outside, you have to go on the inside. So that's the fundamental reason for me standing. You didn't mention the portfolios that you'd be interested in. To... The portfolios standing for camp, obviously, um, I will have, uh, I will go for camp issues. Um, uh, Natural resources, I believe, now encompasses um, the agriculture department, clearly the fisheries, um, but so the agricultural sector, most certainly. Uh, FLH would be part of that. And the meat company. Yeah. Um, very interested in what can be done uh, in all of those areas. And I would give my full support to all of those, um, but also the medical department. Yeah. What issues do you think are going to uh, be, need to be addressed by the, the uh, coming Assembly? The capital programme's been set, as we know, um, uh, but that won't be reviewed on occasion, I'm sure. Um, the biggest project that's on the horizon coming towards us is the port. History tells us that every capital project goes at least 20, possibly 25% over, over budget. This port project uh, could make or break us financially. And it's the first duty of any assembly to make sure you never knock on the door. As you well know, Richard, um, security is number one. Never knock on the door of the British Exchequer for any kind of um, financial assistance. Yeah. So we've got to get that port right. When first elected, members um, are very aware of the opinions of the electorate and such like. Uh, how would you intend to actually keep aware of those once you're elected? I mean, we see Facebook being used, but unfortunately it appears to me that it's being used <coughs> as a soapbox by certain people and not written necessarily giving the opinion of the general public. That's up to the individual. Uh, I've had many, uh, um, <laughs> many things said to me over the years, uh, but one thing that um, I've never heard um, thrown my way is that I'm unapproachable. And although I, as you well know, Richard, are quite capable of talking, um, I'm also a good listener. Great. A number of, we've almost touched on this subject already, but a number of large but essential infrastructure projects are, are either proposed or underway, such as the port, the uh, power station, Tussock House, and possibly more things than that. 
Do you have any thoughts about how these should be funded? Well, if we think of Tussock House, Tussock House has been designed and I believe is, is in the process of being built. Uh, I, I am led to believe it is a, um, being prefabricated overseas. Yeah. So that's pushing that to one side, uh, although it, it definitely needs prodding along. It's taken a long time. Um, the port, I've already mentioned the port. Um, uh, I'd like to see more local expertise involved there. I've been talking to various um, individuals and companies around. I'm not totally finished yet talking to people um, but and listening. Um, but there seems to be very little input from those with roots here in the islands who have maritime experience. And on the, on the power station, the proposed new power station, everything comes from the power station. We can't pump water without electricity. We can't pump the sewerage without electricity. So that is key. If there's one thing that I'm mystified by, it's the total, seemingly total lack of um, uh, any kind of interest in the use of alternatives uh, that are now current, such as uh, solar. The wind turbines, the decision, um, you would have been round the table, Richard. Uh, we made that decision 15 years ago. Um, if, you, if you look from a camp perspective, what's happened at Port Howard, they have a fantastic system, if we're talking camp-wise now, um, solar, wind, uh, integrated. Government have a settlement on the West Fox Bay, and I hear that they're going to buy another diesel generator. Well, there needs to be some initiative here with regards to that. And with the um, uh, increase in um, uh, electro electric vehicles coming on the market, I see no reason why uh, the Fort Island government can't at least take on board what the private sector is doing uh, and invest in a small, um, small trial fleet of electric vehicles alongside of uh, other things that are going on. One of the most common issues being discussed in the streets at the moment is the salmon farming and this work could become a very valuable uh, industry for the Falklands but it's also coupled with some serious questions about uh, pollution and such like. What, what's your uh, position on this? Well, I think that's one of the quickest quickest uh, answers you'll get. 20 months ago, I spent, uh, as soon as this read its head, I went up to the print shop and got 200 Say No to Salmon Farmers uh, stickers, Salmon Farming, I'm sorry, Salmon Farming uh, stickers made. Um, it's an absolute no for me. Yeah. Uh, there is no environmental reason why we would do this. And I think that uh, uh, um, although government have spent or are spending nearly £200,000 on it, I, for one, from a political position, have no interest whatsoever in pursuing it. Communications and internet speeds are quite a, a topic, um, both in Stanley and Camp. How can the Falklands manage to get the sort of speeds and the service that is expected around the world? I'm a non-technical person, really am a non-technical person. But the Falkland Island government have a contract with Shaw. They are the provider for the next, is, I think it's until 2026, whenever it may be, it doesn't matter. There is a contract. They're obliged to service that contract to the level agreed with the Falkland Island company. Uh, Falkland Island company? Oof, the Falkland Island government. Um, we also have a regulator. Now, if it is a responsibility of the, if it is the duty of the contractor to get to that level of service, it is the responsibility of the Falkland Island government regulator to make sure that they do. Yeah, climate change is becoming really quite a quite an issue, not only uh, around the world but in the Falklands itself. Um, what steps should the Falkland Islands take to make the islands more carbon neutral? And given that renewable energy is, has developed considerably in recent years, do you, would you support the development of the new power station being based mainly on renewables rather than diesel? We, 
we all know that there is going to be a need for um, diesel backup here. There always will be. But I see no reason why there can't be some decent investment in um, uh, solar, stroke wind, and they would be the renewables that are proven um, and are accessible. And um, the idea that we will be carbon neutral by the year 2050 raises an eyebrow to me. That is eight assemblies away. It's so far down the road that you, you, it, it, what, to kick the can down that far is out of sight. There's been recent criticism about the level of pensions for old age pensioners um, is really quite low. And in view of the fact that during the working hours, many elderly pe uh, pensioners did not have the opportunity or to purchase a personal pension scheme, or for those who did, the income is just derisory. How do we deal with this? I've done a bit of research on this. And if we take it, if we take it uh, on a 37 and a half government working week, um, the living wage is seven pound, or it escapes me now, I think it's seven pound 15 an hour, right, yeah. which is exactly the same as the, it's the same as the um, uh, uh, minimum wage. If you take that 37 and a half hour working week and then push that over to um, a, a pensioner who is on nothing but the state pension, um, that works out at less than five pounds an hour. So we're expecting people who only have that pension to live on two pounds an hour less than um, what we would consider to be the living wage. That's unacceptable to me, uh, declaring an interest as a pensioner, um, but I'm okay. Um, and it, it's, e it's easy if you're okay to think, well, isn't everybody, but they're not. We also have a pension black hole. Um, the, the pension pot uh, needs seriously looking into because uh, the population is aging, 500 plus pensioners at the moment, and will only grow. The COVID that pandemic has uh, created many problems. Well, fortunately, we've, we've escaped most of these problems. But one thing it has sort of raised is the issue of the fact that we are totally reliant on imported goods right across. The, um, uh, and so that uh, if there was some problem overseas, it could reflect on us and it could be quite difficult. How should that be addressed? Well, we're not alone in that, are we? No, we're not. If you look at the news in the United Kingdom, the, um, uh, they, they're having serious problems. Um, I, I might say that the, the last assembly um, did no different to anybody else when it came to dealing with the COVID crisis. No. So I, I would not criticise them in any shape or form for that. Um, however, um, we are vulnerable in, in a few ways. Um, as a layman, I can only take advice from the medical department. Thank you very much, John. I'm afraid your time's up.